everyone welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the boots and number seven stay perfect foundation I'm starting with my face completely bare because I'm going to start with a demo for you guys and like this you can see my current skin imperfections now I am recovering from a terrible cold courtesy of my daughter and my nose it is so sore because of blowing my nose so much it's a little bit flaky I've had a few breakouts very recently, especially here in the chin area. My under eye circles are a lot uh, more visible because I feel tired, my eyes are itchy. If you're new to my channel, I have combination to oily skin in large pores over here and also on my forehead and I have fine lines as well over here. So the foundations that I personally prefer uh, foundations that are a little bit more on the natural finish because I don't like masking my face so I'm excited to do this review and demo for you guys I'm going to be using two tools to apply the foundation the first one is the Sigma F80 flat top kabuki brush and I'm also going to be using a beauty sponge to apply the foundation so I've already shaken the foundation it comes with a pump and I'm going to take one pump for this side of my face and I'm going to be applying it with my Sigma on this side because I feel like um, with a brush you get a little bit more coverage especially on this side oh I'm gonna get foundation on my hair <laughs> um, so I'm going to just dot as much as I can and then I'm gonna start blending it So I'm going to apply another pump because with the first layer the foundation looks very sheer as you can see there are still some visible breakouts on my chin I hope the camera's picking up so I'm going to just layer the foundation a little bit more but mostly on the areas where I feel I need more coverage So I didn't even finish my second pump. So I would say to get a good medium coverage, a pump and a half should be perfectly fine for half of your face. Um, so now what I'm going to do is apply the rest of my foundation on the other side with the Beauty Blender. So here is the finished application, this side with a brush and this side with a sponge. I have to say I prefer applying this foundation with a brush just because it gives me a little bit more coverage, especially underneath the eye area. I mean, I could have gone in with a little bit more foundation and just blend it in, but I don't want to cake up too much foundation because I applied the exact same amount on each side. This side is a little bit more sheer, but it still looks really nice. I find that the foundation applies very, very nicely with both of tools so what I'm going to do now is finish the rest of my makeup and come back for the rest of my review so now I'm back with the rest of my makeup done and now you can have a better feel of how the foundation actually looks and sits on my skin I've taken all the exact same steps as I would with any other foundation I have a little bit of concealer set everything with powder bronzer blush and a little bit of highlighter so I'm going to get straight into this review I'm going to start with the packaging the foundation comes in a box like this which I find really nice hence the reason maybe why it's so expensive because this foundation costs 14 pounds 50 the outer packaging itself of the foundation comes in a glass uh, a frosted glass bottle with a pump which is always a plus for any of us because I hate foundations that do not have a pump. Now on the bottle, it has the same claims that um, it has on the box. And it says number seven, stay perfect foundation. It's for all skin types. The coverage is supposed to be medium. It's a non-stop complexion perfection that lasts up to 24 hours of wear. It has SPF 15. It's hypoallergenic and it comes in a one fluid ounce, which is 30 ml of product. I guess that's just 
average or standard for any foundation here in the UK. Now, if you guys are familiar to my channel, you know I've reviewed the sister foundation of this one, which is the Boots Number no. 7 Stay Perfect Super Light Foundation. I have this in shade Honey, and this one I have it in shade um, warm beige and I'm going to explain how their system works. They actually have a matching system with a machine that they put close to your face and um, somehow the machine tells them um, or tells you what shade would be more suited for your skin. So the first time I tried they matched me to shade honey and this second time they matched me to deeply beige but deeply beige was very pink so I personally feel that that machine doesn't really work or the assistant doesn't know what she's doing. I have yellow undertone, um, I'm an NC30 to NC35 and uh, my skin is pretty much yellow and when I tan I get olive uh, so this is definitely a summer shade for me and this is more of a winter shade for me so uh, when you're going to get yourself matched just pay attention if you already know your undertone don't go by the machine sometimes it works or for most of you it may work but for me it didn't work on both occasions so this foundation is supposed to be long wearing it's supposed to be lightweight um, for any skin type so if you have normal to dry skin is supposed to not cling on to dry patches if you have combination to oily skin like myself it's supposed to just stay put and not slip and slide around your face which is really good um, I don't find that this foundation controls oil neither nor it says that it does control oil but because it's long wearing um, I was very very impressed by um, by the longevity and although oils were seeping through my face, the foundation still stayed put. Um, I blocked it throughout the day, it didn't transfer onto the tissue, which really surprised me, um, but the foundation still stayed. And I have really, really long days. I wake up around six o'clock in the morning, by seven I'm out, and I come home after 11 hours. And I was really impressed by the longevity, by the way the foundation stayed on the skin. Now this foundation, this line comes with a 17 shades, which is absolutely amazing, so more than likely, you you will find a good match for you but I'm not very impressed by the undertones now on the box it says warm beige and when I put this little sticker here right next to my face it looks like it's quite warm but when you look at the bottle the foundation looks gray and when I took well when I dispensed a pump out of the foundation I was shocked that it was gray as well now once it settles into the skin I feel like it adapts to my skin tone which is really good but the undertone is very strange I've never tried any foundations that had gray and I find that most of them are like that because it's not the first time that I go to boots and I test their foundations on the back of my hand and it kind of puts me off that they're gray because who's out there that's gray usually foundation should be warm cool um, and neutral and I find that this foundation is just neutral but in a very weird way because it's very grayish so that kind of like put me off now as you guys know I am very very honest with all my reviews if you're familiar to my channel you know I wouldn't recommend things that I don't like however it's going to be the first time I'm going to say this in my channel. I am not very impressed with this foundation at all. Although it has really good points about it, I'm not wowed by it. One of the things that I dislike is the price. £14.50 is very expensive for a drugstore brand. Although the packaging is great, it's not a high-end product. Um, I know on promotion sometimes you can get bare minerals for like £18. So... I'm just giving you guys an example. I am not very wowed and then the price really puts me off slightly. The undertone is very weird. Although it looks like it has adapted to my skin, I find that the foundation is quite grayish in undertone. And although it adapts to my skin and it also makes me look a little bit airbrushed, I don't know if the camera's picking up, but I find that this foundation looks like foundation. If you're looking at me from afar, from a distance, you know, the foundation looks really nice. But if you come really close or if I bring a mirror really close to my face, I don't like what I see. Now, the positive, I have a little bit of skin here. I do apologize if that's coming up on the camera, but my nose is so sore from my cold. I apologize. Um, I don't like the way it looks over here. It sinks into my smile lines. Um, it separates a little bit. I keep having to either fix it or put a little bit of powder. I don't think that my bronzer went on the foundation all that well. 
I feel like it dragged a little bit. It didn't really sit on the foundation properly. Um, when I look at the shades and warm beige in most foundations, it's either too dark for me or it's yellow enough, if that makes any sense. I don't find that this foundation is warm. It's The shade is not warm. I can see a difference between my jawline and my neck. My neck down here, I'm a lot lighter, if you guys can see. Uh, but that's not the big issue because if the foundation was yellow enough, I could just drag it down. Although I did drag it down slightly, I can still see that it's not warm enough for my skin tone. I feel like the foundation looks like foundation. Um, it could be because I have maturing skin. I'm in my late 30s and I find that the, the more or the older you are, sometimes foundations don't sit very well on your skin. And I just find that this one very close I really don't like the look of the foundation. Now, there are a lot of people now reviewing this foundation, especially from the US, because Boots has reached out to um, YouTubers that have a bigger channel for them to review this, this foundation, and a lot of them are saying that they like it. I personally am not wowed by the foundation. So that is my review on the Boots Number no. 7 Stay Perfect Foundation. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you would be interested in more reviews from the drugstore. Let me know which reviews you would like to see and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!